Indiana gubernatorial race. That was the race that pitted Indianapolis's mayor, Steve Goldsmith, the Republican, and Frank O'Bannon, the lieutenant governor. CNN declares that when it's all said and done, we estimate that Frank O'Bannon will be the next governor of Indiana. And Ken Bodie, that's your state. A little history being made there. Well, Steve, Gold, Steve Goldsmith, uh, the mayor of Indianapolis, Indiana has never had a mayor from Indianapolis. Frank O'Bannon. Looking at Florida now with 25 electoral votes, CNN declares that President Clinton has won this very important state. Major victory this state hasn't voted Democratic since 1976. A lot of senior citizens in Florida and the Medicare issue might have been big. The polls have also just closed in the state of New Hampshire. Bill Clinton won it by just a hair in 1992. And Ken Bode? Judy, he started his last day of his last campaign in New Hampshire. It was very emotional for Bill Clinton, and he pretty much knew he would win this one. Looking at Vermont, a declared winner for those three electoral votes, Bill Clinton. Vermont hadn't voted Democratic since 1964 until 92. It went for Clinton then. It's going for Clinton now. It's a Republican state, but a liberal Republican state. Georgia, it's very close in the Peach State. Bill Clinton won it barely in 92, and it's still undecided, Ken, at this hour. That's right. He did win it barely in 92. In 1992, it was a one-point state, and it's shaping up to be something like a one-point state again tonight. In Thomas Jefferson State, Virginia, 13 electoral votes. This race undecided at this hour. Virginia has not voted for a Democrat for president since 1964. It didn't vote for Jimmy Carter. And remember, this is a big tobacco state. And another southern undecided, South Carolina. This is a state that the Dole people were counting on, Ken Bode. Well, I think it's undecided because it's so soon after the polls close. You're, you're absolutely right. The Dole people were counting on South Carolina, and I bet they still are. Two other states looking at them quickly. Kentucky, this one is too close to call. And in Indiana, we're saying it is still undecided. This hour, let's take a look at that all-important electoral map and what we have. It's not a lot, but we have something. It's Bill Clinton has nailed down 32 electoral votes. At this hour, Bob Dole, nothing. But if the night is young, the night's early. and New Hampshire in that very tough gubernatorial race between Gene Shaheen and Ovid Lamontine. CNN declares that New Hampshire now has its first woman governor, Jean Shaheen. The Democrats pick up this seat and also... Yes, uh, Jean Shaheen would be the first female governor. She took the anti-tax pledge. Uh, it was a tough race, but she has won it. First uh, elected Democratic governor since, I think, 1980. Exactly. Another race uh, people are keeping their eyes on, the state of South Carolina, Strom Thurmond. CNN declares him the winner. Judy Strom Thurmond is 93 years old. He'll be 94 when he takes office. The interesting, most interesting fact to me is that his babysitter, his childhood babysitter, <laughs> voted for him. His mm -hmm. childhood babysitter, who's 104 years old, <laughs> voted for... We're watching principally as the United States Senate. You started talking about what was happening in New Hampshire at the gubernatorial level. Let's take a look at what's happened at the Senate level as well. This is good news for the Democrats. It's a pickup for them. They need three pickups net if they're to take control of the United States Senate. Dick Sweat beats Bob Smith, ousts the incumbent for a Democratic pickup in the Granite State. What once was traditionally Republican territory is swinging the other way tonight. Off to Georgia now. A very close race throughout in the state of Georgia, and it remains so. We're not calling that at this time. Max Cleland, Guy Milner, uh, one up against the other. Guy Milner strongly in favor of Dole's tax plan. Max Cleland saying that he's in favor of abortion rights. This was an ideological and fiscal split. To Virginia, the battle of the dollars here. Senator John Warner against Mark Warner. The Democrats uh, uh, floated a guy here who spent $5 million of his own money. This one uh, not yet called, but this one, uh, this one was one that everyone was watching very closely. Again, let's remind you what we're looking at here. The balance of power coming into this evening in the United States Senate. As you can see here in red, the Republicans held 53 seats. The Democrats, represented in blue, held 47. Up for grabs this evening, contested seats, 34 of them. What we just told you was that New Hampshire, which had been a Republican seat, has now gone for a Democrat. If everyone else were to hold the parties, the Democrats would need two more. 
with a vote by the vice president, they'd control the United States Senate. But this is a very early evening yet, much more to be determined, more races still be, to be coming. And in the next hour or so, Bernie and Judy will be seeing a lot more of these states close. We'll have some more of these races. Let's go back to you on the national desk. Results, a number of interesting races. And in Indiana, 10th congressional district, Virginia Blankenbaker, a Republican, 47% of the vote to Julia Carson, a Democrat, 53%. This is an open Democratic seat that the Republicans have wanted to pick up. And in Kentucky's third congressional district, Republican Ann Northrup against Democratic incumbent Mike Ward. Now, now here the Democrat is the freshman. That's right. Democratic freshman. There have been very few Democratic uh, incumbents who are vulnerable. Northrop now leads 51 to 49. A very close race. Republicans have been hoping for a pickup. Over in Kentucky, for just to prove that we can have fun a little bit here, we brought this one up. We actually have a winner. And this <laughs> is for those people who, who uh, regret the fact that the baseball season is over, Frank. We can give them some sports news tonight. Jim Bunning, great Hall of Fame picture, re-elected a Republican seat. Republican district, not a great surprise. Let's move north into the state of New Hampshire. Open district there. Uh, it's a familiar name. Uh, New Hampshire's first congressional district, an open Republican seat. John Sununu, son of the former governor, former White House chief of staff, in a close race, we think, with Joe Keefe, a Democratic state chairman. Going to be a good race. Let the record show that John Sununu said his son would win. We'll see. In Georgia, meanwhile, Georgia 4, a tough race here. A, a race that really has sort of the darker side in terms of charges back and forth, charges of race and of religion involved. Cynthia, Cynthia McKinney, Democratic incumbent, redistricted, angry about the redistricting. The Republican is John Mitnick. Uh, a Jewish, a self-described moderate Republican. Very state of Ohio, CNN calls that the state of Ohio has been won by President Clinton. This is a big victory, Ken Bode, for the Democrats. That is true. No Republican has ever been elected without carrying Ohio. And it's also further bad news because for the last 30 years, this state has voted for the winning candidate. CNN declares that Bill Clinton has won West Virginia's five electoral votes. Not a big surprise that West Virginia is reliably Democratic. Every congressman, senator, the governor in both houses of the state legislature controlled by the Democrats. Polls have also just closed in the state of North Carolina, but at this hour, it is undecided among the three gentlemen you see there on the screen. Judy, this is fairly typical for North Carolina. This is a generally Republican state in presidential races, but George Bush won this state by less than 1% last time, his very closest state. These next two are going to surprise, if not shock you, first in Indiana. CNN says that this one is too close to call. And in Kentucky, again, eight electoral votes in Kentucky, too close to call. And look at the percentage of reports. Here are three states where the polls closed half an hour ago, as yet undecided. Georgia, the peach state. Virginia, the old dominion, still undecided. And South Carolina, in the presidential contest, undecided. Now let's move over to the electoral map to show you what we have so far. President Clinton leading Bob Dole, 58 electoral votes. The magic number is 270. Well, Ohio's the story of this half hour. States that we know, uh, one or the other has won, and here it is for President Clinton, Florida. You've been hearing this, New Hampshire, Ohio, Vermont, and West Virginia. And that adds up to the, what is it, 58? We just counted a yes. few minutes ago. Mm -hmm. Well, the electoral votes is Bob Dole. Bob Dole was counting on Texas, a state that hasn't gone Democratic since 1976, and where Republicans have made big inroads. If he didn't carry Texas, he wouldn't have had a prayer. Pennsylvania, another big electoral vote state. Uh, Bill Clinton, the winner. This state has voted Republican at state levels, Democrat for president recently, and it's not been wrong in 30 years. In the land of Lincoln, 22 electoral votes. President Clinton winning the state. Talk about a bellwether state. This is one, too. All winning candidates this century have carried Illinois, with only two exceptions. Woodrow Wilson in 16 and Carter in 76 did not carry Illinois. Another Midwestern industrial state in Bill Clinton's corner, Michigan, and its 18 electoral votes. One of the most memorable moments of this campaign was when Bob Dole went back to that Battle Creek Veterans Hospital where he spent two years recovering from his war wounds. Michigan, however, did not vote with Dole. In New Jersey, CNN declares President Clinton taking over this state as he did in 1992. Bob Dole used Governor Whitman's come-from-behind victory as a model for his campaign and the fact that she promised and delivered a very big tax cut, but it didn't work. 
The state of Massachusetts for Bill Clinton, all 12 electoral votes. Missouri, the show me state for the president, for Bill Clinton. Tennessee, the volunteer state, 11 electoral votes in Bill Clinton's corner. Maryland, a state that has gone Democratic, now has gone Democratic once again. And Connecticut, eight electoral votes for Bill Clinton. Bob Dole has something to cheer about in Oklahoma. He is winning that state tonight, along with its eight electoral votes. And in Kansas, guess what? The home state of this former senator goes to Bob Dole. In Maine, President Clinton takes off four electoral votes there, as he does in Delaware, three electoral votes there. And no surprise, in the District of Columbia, the president winning handily three electoral votes. The polls have just closed also in the state of Mississippi, but it is undecided. We do not have a result yet from Mississippi. And Alabama has just gone for Bob Dole. We declare, CNN declares, Bob Dole the winner in the state of Alabama. This is a place that President Clinton had campaigned in just a few days ago. Here is a look at this hour, just a moment after 8 o'clock in the East. Bill Clinton, 198 electoral votes. Those states that you see in blue, Bob Dole, 55. And the big one on that map, gentlemen, is Texas. And that, that's one that comes sweet. Uh, to Bob Dole. That's right. That was a very, very competitive state. That's right. We know we're, you're keeping score out there on what's been won so far. First for the president, the states won. Connecticut, Delaware, Florida, Illinois, Maine, Maryland, Massachusetts, Michigan, Missouri, New Hampshire, New Jersey, Ohio, Pennsylvania, and Tennessee. Clinton states tonight. Dole states won thus far, shortly past 8 Eastern time, Alabama, Kansas, Oklahoma, and Texas. And Bernie, by our tally, we state of New Jersey, and that is the Democrat, Bob Torricelli. CNN declares he is the winner. That means that that seat will stay Democratic. That's right. Bill Bradley's retiring from the Senate. A very, very tough, very, very expensive, and very, very negative campaign run by both candidates in that race. This might be attributable to Bill Clinton's coattails because he carried New Jersey. Well, Bernie and Judy, one big state we've got to tell you about right now is the state of Georgia, where the term liberal was thrown around, but it didn't stop Max Cleland. Max Cleland winning the seat vacated by Sam Nunn beating and turning back Guy Milner. It had been a hope for Republican gain. Uh, the party there watching that very closely, saying they had a surge in the final days, but Max Cleland wins narrowly. Onward to Massachusetts, John Kerry beating back a challenge by Governor William Weld, the popular Republican pro-choice, but John Kerry uh, holding forth and carrying on into the 104th. On to Illinois now, where Dick Durbin turns back a challenge from Al Salvi, a very conservative Republican there, but Dick Durbin winning there. In Kansas, a predictable win for Pat Roberts. That was an open seat. He picks that up, keeps it in Republican hands, turning back Sally Thompson. The state of Michigan, Senator Carl Levin, dependable Democrat, incumbent, he will return to the United States Senate, pretty much as expected, defeating Ronna Romney. Oklahoma, Senator Jim Inhofe, that's another one that was expected. The Republican there returning to Washington, uh, turning back Jim Boren, cousin of the former senator. To Tennessee, now Senator Fred Thompson, a one-time actor, now the incumbent, uh, returns as a Republican to Washington, where he will take yet another bow on the stage for six years in the uh, United States Senate. In Texas, Senator Phil Graham winning, turning back a challenge by Victor Morales, the school teacher who uh, waged a quixotic campaign, but in the end, Phil Graham returning uh, as he and most expected. Delaware, Joseph Biden returning uh, as he expected as well. No real surprise there. To the state of Mississippi, Senator Thad Ed Cochran will go back for another uh, term in the United States Senate. That's the incumbent again uh, riding the uh, predictable uh, wave in the South. West Virginia now, another predictable wave. Senator Jay Rockefeller, one of the more liberal and predictable Democrats in the United States Senate. He too will go back. Not a very tough campaign for him there. Now, a few states too close to call. Still Alabama. The Republicans are looking for a pickup here. This pits the Democrat Bedford against the Republican Sessions. A very, very closely watched race. To the other Kansas seat. This state seat was the one that was vacated when Robert Dole took his leave to campaign uh, for presidency. Jill Docking, the Democrat, against Sam Brownback. Very conservative Republican. A real bellwether there. And in the state of Maine, also too close to call. Susan Collins, the Republican on the right there. 
up against Joe Brennan. He's been running since the 1960s. He's trying again this time for the Senate. Virginia, the Warner brothers, they're not brothers, but as far as the state is concerned, they're side by side. Both wealthy, too early to call this one so far. Senator against John Warner. Now, let us again bring you up to date as to exactly what we're watching in the United States Senate. This 8 o'clock hour, a very, very big one. Coming into this evening, the Republicans, 53 seats, the Democrats, 47. Where we stand right now, 34 seats altogether up for grabs this evening. As you can see in this 8 o'clock hour, a number of them being decided. More shortly, we presume, in several minutes. Right now, the Republicans have won 8 of those 34. The Democrats have won 8. The Democrats have picked up one that had been in Republican hands up in the state of New Hampshire. So where it stands, if you add all the math together, 42 for the Republicans, 40 for the Democrats, 18 critical seats undecided. Let's wander over here, not very far away, to Bruce Morton. Bruce, you've been out on the campaign. CNN has made the call that Bob Dole won and he's closed New Jersey. And we are also able to say that the winner in the Senate there, the Senate race for Bill Bradley's seat, is the Democrat, Bob Torricelli. CNN's own Jonathan Carl is at uh, Mr. Torres Elbers we have in the North Carolina Senate race. And these are the raw count, you might, or this is the raw count, with 8% of the precincts or the vote counted. You can see why Jesse Helms is the winner, 99,000 votes. In Massachusetts, here are some raw numbers in the Senate contest there. CNN has declared John Kerry, the Democrat, the winner. And I believe we've got some numbers to look at. Yes, again, a very small percentage of the vote in, but what we have shows John Kerry ahead. And as we said a minute ago, John Kerry has been declared the winner. Representatives concerned, you can't say. All right, now Arkansas, the president's home state. Add Arkansas to the growing number of states going the president's way this night. As Ken and Bill alluded to, his early and overwhelming success was expected, of course, but at least one prize must seem especially sweet, the sunshine state, Florida. As we just heard. And we have a race to call, a Senate race to call right now, Bernie, and that is a Kansas B, uh, a seat uh, that, this is Bob Dole's seat, in fact. Uh, Sam Brownback, the Republican freshman congressman, has not only gone back to the, to the Congress, he's gone back to the other chamber, to the Senate, defeating uh, the Democrat Jill Docking, a wife of the former lieutenant governor of Kansas, Tom Docking. Continuing now. In fact, the issue of race played a very important role. The state of North Carolina, which North Carolina goes back to Senator Jesse Helms for six more years for the Republican. Helms ran a series of really tough ads, hitting his opponent, Harvey Gant, African-American, freshman first, and to Kentucky 1, district there. We have a allegedly vulnerable Republican freshman, Ed Whitfield. Um, this is a western uh, Kentucky district. Uh, very, very Democratic, about 70% Democratic. Well, Whitfield has held on here to win over Dennis Null, a generally regarded as a second-tier Democratic candidate, but the sort of candidate who... Where another Republican freshman is battling uh, a challenge, also being tied to Newt Gingrich. But the difference is here, uh, Frank, in North Carolina's fourth, Fred Heineman, another freshman, was in the top 10 vulnerable Republicans. Whitfield was regarded in that second 10, second 15. And so Heineman's defeat, if indeed he does lose, would not be a shocker. Uh, David Price, former congressman, may well be coming back, but it's still too early to tell. And if we hop off the uh, beaten track a little bit to the state of Vermont, we see something that we don't see in American politics very often. It's uh, Congress's lone independent, Bernie Sanders. He doesn't really sound like a Vermonter, come to think of it. He sound, sure sounds like a New Yorker to me. In any case, Bernie Sanders who was suppo supposed to have a tough fight. Susan Sweetser, an attractive Republican state senator. Brought down the wrath of his party when he opposed Oliver North getting his party's nomination in the Senate contest there. That's with 32% of the precincts in. Put a check mark very shortly by Mr. Warner, the one on top. He's going back to the United States. CNN declares a winner in the Tar Heel State. Bob Dole has won North Carolina. North Carolina voted for George Bush by the narrowest of margins last time, and the Republicans have retained it. It's a narrow margin this time, and maybe... William Jefferson Clinton has a job for four more years. 
He becomes the first Democrat since Franklin Roosevelt to win re-election to the White House. We don't know what kind of mandate he has. That depends on what happens in Congress and whether he gets over 50%. But look at where he was two years ago and where he is now. 275, that's five votes over a majority. Two years ago, Bill Clinton was toast. I mean, no one would have bet on his re-election. He was finished. He had lost both houses of Congress for the first time in 40 years. This is one of the great miraculous comebacks in American... One of the main reasons, in fact, perhaps the main reason we're able to call Bill Clinton the winner at this hour is New York. It has the second biggest electoral prize in voting. 33 electoral votes. It's not really the purpose of putting a vice presidential candidate on the ticket to help you win his home state, but... Jack Kemp didn't help with New York. Going to the Derry State, which has a Republican governor, that didn't stop Bill Clinton from winning Wisconsin's electoral votes. Wisconsin did go Democratic for Clinton in 92. It went for Dukakis and for Carter twice. It's voted Democratic a lot. It's a very strongly Catholic state. Another state uh, Bill Clinton felt pretty confident about, Minnesota. It's the only state to vote Democratic in six of the last seven elections, Ken. That's right. Ten electoral votes. The only Democrat to lose this state in modern times was the neighbor, George McGovern, from South Dakota in 72. The polls just closed in Louisiana. We're still saying at this moment, this one is undecided. This is a southern state that went for Clinton in 92. Most states are voting the way they did back then. It's very heavily black and also the most Catholic state in the country, in the South. <laughs> Arizona, the longest string of consecutive presidential votes. It last voted, voted Democratic in 1948. It is undecided, though, at this hour. Bill Clinton had fun playing in Arizona, bringing his new AARP card out there and talking to the seniors in Arizona about Medicare. He tried hard to put this state into play, and he apparently succeeded. Now, let's go to Colorado first. That is undecided at this hour. In Nebraska, which is coming up next. We'll come back to that in just a moment. Let's go to New Mexico. CNN declares that President Clinton has won New Mexico's five electoral votes, and he has done ditto in Rhode Island. Also a winner tonight for the president. Four electoral votes there. North Dakota, undecided. The polls have just closed in this state with three electoral votes, but still no winner. South Dakota, the neighboring state to the south, of course, three electoral votes, undecided at this hour. But we can call Bob Dole the winner in the state of Wyoming. And let's take a look at the electoral map at this hour. 267 votes, electoral votes we can call in Bill Clinton's co corner to 92 for Bob Dole. And we just saw pictures a moment ago of the uh, Dole head. can declare a race in Minnesota, that Minnesota Senate race, the incumbent Paul Wellstone, some say one of the most liberal men in the United States Senate, has beat back the challenge of Rudy Boschwitz. And he embraced liberalism. He was one of the few Democrats to vote against President Clinton's welfare reform bill. They attacked him as a liberal. Bernie, with a lead-in like that, I suppose I'm in some trouble. But let's start out with the Wyoming, where we have some results as well, to fill the seat of retirement. Hiring Alan Simpson, Mike Enzi wins there, so a Republican returns to Washington. He gets an A rating from the NRA. In Rhode Island, a Democrat replaces a Democrat, Jack Reed replacing retiring Claiborne Pell. And in the state of New Mexico, Pete Domenici wins yet again in 19, last time around in 1990. He won 73% of the vote. They love Pete Domenici in New Mexico. The Senate, the United States Senate, came into this evening in Republican hands. 53 Republican seats, and the seats in red there, to 47 for the Democrats, so the Democrats needed three for at least a tie. 34 seats at stake this evening. Many of them now have been determined. So far, the Republicans having taken 13 of the seats tonight, the Democrats just 10. So where it stands right now, if you factor in the incumbents too, the Republicans holding 47, the Democrats 42, but as you can see there, several more to be determined. The Democrats picked up a seat in New Hampshire, and the Republicans picked up a seat in Alabama. Now, the House 
236 Republicans coming in the 104th Congress, the Congress that Newt built to 198 for the Democrats, an independent to be thrown in there as well. Right now, the Republicans sitting on 90 seats, the Democrats 59, with that whole bunch in the middle there yet to be determined as the polls close across the country. But a couple of interesting things we want to tell you right here. Coming into tonight, 70-odd House Republican freshmen being tied to Newt Gingrich. So far, we can tell you there have been 16 winners among the freshmen freshman Republican class, no losers. That's very good news for the Republicans. Not very many surprises or close races there, but we're watching very closely. There is a pickup for the Republicans as well in, Sa in uh, South Dakota. That seat had been a retired, retiring Democrat. It's now in Republican hands. And 19 open Democratic seats we're watching so far. The ones we can call there have all gone back to the Democrats, only three or four so far. So that's the look right now. A lot to come this evening in the congressional races. Back now to the National Desk. Thank you, Brian. We are saying that Bill Clinton has won Louisiana in 1996, and it's nine electoral votes. Now taking you to the all-important map that matters most of all in this presidential race. President Clinton at this hour has 284 electoral votes. Challenging Bob Dole has 96 electoral votes. And we continue the count. But as uh, good a shape the president is in and these electoral votes, uh, his coattails were not long enough, Bernie, as you said earlier tonight, to uh, help the Democrat state of Arkansas that the U.S. Senate seat goes to the Republican, Congressman Tim Hutchinson. That is a takeover for the Republicans. That's a seat that was held by David Pryor. And, of course, uh, what's interesting in Arkansas is that the Republican Party has not won a seat in Arkansas in 100 years. And another Senate race we can call, again, and another Republican pickup, Chuck Hagel, the Republican defeating the governor, the sitting governor, Ben Nelson. Okay. Ben Nelson is a uh, governor, a sitting governor. He's the second sitting... ...states to declare, states with the polls having just closed in the Hawkeye State, Iowa, President Clinton does as he did in 92. He wins. In 1992, the Iowa vote exactly mirrored the national vote. 43% for Clinton, 37 Bush, and 19 for Perot. Utah, this is a state that uh, gave Bill Clinton his worst uh, uh, results in 1992, and once again, it's done the same. Bob Dole, the winner. Worst results, I'm not sure yet, but it's not been a Democratic state since LBJ in 1964. Bob Dole winning ditto in Idaho. Four electoral votes, Bill. Ditto in Idaho and Utah. Hasn't voted Democratic since 1964. Clinton only got 28% of the vote in 1992 in Idaho. In, uh, Idaho. And Nevada, undecided. This is a state uh, that was, uh, I think Bill Clinton was the first Democrat in 28 years to carry it the last time. We don't know what's going to happen this time. Well, our crack research team, Judy, tells me that Nevada has the highest divorce rate in the nation. <laughs> I don't know what that means exactly in terms of presidential voting. Well, we'll let's move out. on to Montana then. We have to say Montana right now. Undecided. Big surprise in 92 when Montana voted for Bill Clinton. A lot of people think Perot's very high vote there, 26%, might have taken a lot of votes from the Republicans and helped Bill Clinton carry the state. With a lower Perot vote, can he do it this time? And the state of Kentucky, President Clinton, the winner. This state keeps up its record of voting with the winner. What, began over the last, this will now be eight elections it's voted That's with right, the winner. it's a genuine bellwether presidential state. Bob Dole said earlier this year, if Bob Dole wins Kentucky, I'll be president. He's not going to win Kentucky, and he's not going to be president. Okay, if you're, you're keeping score at home for the president, these are the states won. Arkansas, Connecticut, Delaware, Florida, Illinois, Iowa, Kentucky, Louisiana, Maine, Maryland, Massachusetts, Michigan, Minnesota, and Missouri. And the states won New Hampshire, New Jersey, New Mexico, New York, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Rhode Island, Tennessee, Vermont, Washington, D.C., no surprise there, predominantly Democratic in the district, West Virginia and Wisconsin. Now to the Dole states won the night. Alabama, Idaho, Indiana, Kansas, Nebraska, North Carolina, Oklahoma, South Carolina, Texas, Utah, and Wyoming. The Dole states. Now let's take a look at some raw numbers. With 29% of the national vote that has come in, you can see the numbers there. The president has 49%. 
Bob Dole, 43 percent, and Ross Perot, 8 percent. But again, that's with less than 30 percent of the vote counted. Thanks very much, Bernie. Well, what we can tell you at this time is that the Republicans are teetering on the edge of uh, being able to claim victory, being able to say that mathematically they will retain control of the United States Senate. Let's take a look and tell you some of what's happening. First to Idaho. In the state of Idaho, a close race? Not really. Larry Craig wins. The Republican, he returns to Washington rather easily. In Iowa as well. Not much uh, drama there in the end. Tom Harkin, actually there's a little bit of drama. Tom Harkin and uh, Lightfoot there. J Representative Jim Lightfoot in a close race, still too close to call. In Montana, early days yet, Senator Baucus and, um, and uh, Dennis Reberg, Rayburg rather, still not calling that one for you. In New Hampshire, we've gone back. We're taking another look at this one. It's turning out to be a closer race than uh, we'd anticipated uh, between Bob Smith, the Republican, and Dick Sweat, the Democrat. In Louisiana, a very close and hard-fought race there. And as you can see, with a little bit more than a third reporting, Woody Jenkins up over Mary Landrieu. To Colorado now. Rocky Mountain State, Allard versus Strickland. Allard, the Republican, out in front, but still, again, very early hours, only 2% in, so that's one we're going to have to keep watching. South Dakota, Larry Pressler up against, uh, against Tim Johnson, representative there. Johnson so far up, but again, very, very slim numbers there. And in the state of Maine, a very close race, but still only 11% reporting, so nothing definitive there. Susan Collins against Joe Brennan. Joe Brennan is very well known in that state, has been running since the 60s for one office or another. So, in the Senate, the balance of power in the Senate coming into this evening was as follows. The Republicans, having held for these last few years, 53 seats represented in red, 47 for the Democrats, the Democrats needing three. In fact, 34 seats at stake at the beginning of this evening. That's the way it cycles through. 16 seats going to the Republicans tonight, nine to the Democrats. The Republicans have picked up two seats. So as it now stands, the Republicans, as you can see, hold 50 seats, the Democrats 41, nine undecided. Only five of those nine remaining seats are Republican seats. The Democrats would have to pick all of those up if they were to now regain control or at least have a tie. The 104th Congress, the House of Representatives, into this evening, 236 Republican, 198 Democrat. All 104, 435 House seats up for grabs tonight. That's the way it works. At this hour, the Republicans holding 127, the Democrats holding 108. What we can tell you so far is that in the uh, freshman class, which we watch very closely, of Republicans, the uh, Republicans voted in in 1994, uh, most of them are doing rather well. We have 23 of them who've won, only three of them who've been de defeated. We will keep watching very closely to see what happens. I want to very briefly come over to Bruce Morton here. Petering for now several hours, and we can report to you that Bob Dole is the winner in the state of Virginia. 13 electoral votes. This is a state that George Bush won in 92, and it's a state that is frankly dependably Republican, but it was a toss-up for a long time this yeah. year. That's right. The rule is holding. This is race for Speaker Gingrich. He's being uh, challenged by the millionaire cookie manufacturer, Baker, Michael Coles. We have the raw data in so far with 13% of the precincts reporting. You see the speaker with just about uh, 5,000 ahead of Mr. Cole. CNN's live coverage on this election 96 from CNN. Out of state, we reported the Senate results on just moments ago. That is Massachusetts. We declared John Kerry the winner. 594,000 votes at 52%. Let's go to Governor Weld, who is making a speech right now. Let's listen. We have another Senate uh, winner to tell you about, and that is that Tom Harkin, the Democrat, has won re-election to the U.S. Senate from the state of Iowa. There it is. He defeated uh, Republican Congressman Jim Ross Lightfoot. Now to another Senate race. In but I consider it uh, an honor to, to live in this wonderful country and to have met so many of you who really care and let's find a way to reach out. Massachusetts, uh, where John Kerry, the uh, incumbent general. senator, has been re-elected. Democrat re-elected in Massachusetts. John Kerry easy. defeating the governor of Massachusetts, the Republican William Weld, who had hoped to unseat him. Let's listen to John Kerry. And I...
Republicans in the Senate, a Democrat, won re-election. This is the second time around that Rudy Bosch was tried to beat Wellstone. This is the I one our board that looks at this hour with 18% of the precincts reporting. Sure Wellstone with 59% to Boschwitz's 38%. And here he is now, tired but happy. I want Perot's headquarters in just a moment. Bernie, let's look right now at the... Uh, the total, these are the vote, actual vote totals that we get. And you can see Ross Perot uh, with 8% of the vote. Ross Perot hasn't had much to say yet tonight. Let's listen to what he's saying now. Frank, we interrupted you, but we felt that you and our viewers wanted to know the very latest. Oh, Judy has another one. I think one. we've got My one apology. more to call, and I need to see or get a cue from Bob, from Bob Fernand. Let's see, what is what are we calling now? Let's take a Gary look. Gary Locke. Ah, yes, uh, Gary Locke, the winner, we are declaring, the Democrat in uh, the state of Washington, he would be, will become the first Asian American governor in the United States. This is not a pickup for the uh, Democrats. This Mike Lowry was a Democrat and did not run again, so okay. this is a... Okay, he, I just he, wanted to add he's the first Chinese American on the mainland. For 20-some years in the state legislature, he did not vote for a single tax increase. Mary Landrieu. She had problems with the African-American community in Louisiana, and she had to work feverishly to shore up support among uh, black uh, voters in the state of Louisiana. What did for him to pick up the phone tonight and call the president here while we're waiting for Bob Dole to speak? Let's look at the raw vote totals across the United States at this hour. It's 1123 in the east. Up to the northeast in New Hampshire, Robert Smith, the incumbent Republican, he hung on by his fingernails, and he's going to be going back to Washington. Bob Smith, the winner there in New Hampshire. And in the state of Montana, Max Baucus, the Democrat, hangs on. Uh, he, uh, this, this turned out to be a much closer race than Mac, Max Baucus would have liked, but he is now able to return to Washington uh, as the U.S. Senator from the state of Montana. Don't go away. CNN will be back with more coverage on this election night. Investigations that we'll have to talk about later. You can see uh, that, that that's something he's been talking about on the trail. Now let's look at the electoral map, Bernie. Bill Clinton has 375 electoral votes. Bob Doe, 135. CNN shows that the president has won 30 states plus the District of Columbia. And Senator Doe, Jack Kemp, having won 16 states so far. We still have not called the states of Colorado, Georgia, Nevada, and Montana. This is already an improvement by five electoral votes over what Bill Clinton won in 1992. In 1992, he had 370 to George Bush's 168. We don't know whether it's going to go higher because of those states that are still outstanding. There's so much more to tell you about this election night. Frank Cessna is standing by to take us to the congressional desk in the very latest. We go to Frank when we come back. Bernie, as we all know, it said the president proposes, the Congress disposes, the disposition of the 105th Congress will be Republican. The House of Representatives coming into this evening, the 104th Congress, was a Republican territory. The 105th stays that way. Here's what it looked like at the start of this evening. 236 Republican seats represented in red, 198 in blue. The voting takes place. We count them up. Right now, with still 59 seats undecided, 197 Republican, 177 Democratic. We'll talk about the pickups in just a moment. But what exactly happened here tonight? Well, we're going to wander over here and talk to Stu Rothenberg, who's been monitoring this with us throughout the evening. The key targets here for the Democrats. There were 70 at stake. So far, 42 have been elected. Six have been defeated. Let's talk about a couple, Stu, that have lost. First, Illinois 5. A fellow by the name of Michael Flanagan, the Republican there. Absolutely. Frank, what happened was the, the most... He's, he's in the little picture. The big picture is the man who wins. Rod Blagojevich, right, a state representative 
representative, Democratic state representative. Um, the, the most vulnerable Republicans went down to defeat, and Flanagan was certainly in that group. He swept the victory two years ago, defeating Dan Rostenkowski on the Republican wave. But without the wave, he was washed back out to sea. Another one in North Carolina. North Carolina, David Funderburk. This is a actually a conservative Republican district. Funder, Funderburk's problem... So let's go over to Kentucky. Kentucky won. A lot of money, labor money, came into this campaign to move it away from the Republican. But look what happened. Yes, Ed Whitfield uh, defeated Dennis Null. Particularly interesting because in polling over the past few weeks, Whitfield was under 50% of the vote. One of the big question marks, would undecided voters go for the Republican or would they say throw, throw the bums out? In this case, they voted for the incumbent. Now in Iowa, AFL-CIO money came in there, but the Republicans countered, wait a minute, don't give the liberals a blank check. Uh, uh, you're, you're absolutely right. Again, big money, big money in against Greg Gansky, the Republican. It's 19 of them in the House, one of them in Alabama, Alabama three. The Republican moves in, defeating, uh, taking a seat that had been held by a Democrat. Yeah, Frank, uh, the South turned out to be the Republican gold mine once again. Here was a case where Republican polling showed Riley ahead, uh, a businessman, car dealer, Democratic polling said, nope, Ted Little, Democratic state senator, was going to win. Apparently the Republican numbers were better. Riley portrayed this race as a liberal versus a conservative. And it happened in Arkansas, too, the president's uh, home state. Yeah, Bud Cummins, this is really something of surprise. He started behind, significantly behind in polling. Uh, he ended up beating a Democratic... The House 3. Yeah, this is Sonny Montgomery's open seat that we all knew that long one, time Democrat. we all knew that when this one went open, the Republicans would have a terrific chance. Chip Pickering, who looks like about 15 years old, however, was able to get conservatives to line up. Behind. What's happened across the aisle, across the hill, over in the United States Senate? Again, a look, a profile at what this was all about coming into this evening's race. 53 seats held by the Republicans, 47 by the Democrats. The Democrats would have needed a net gain of three. It then would have been 50-50, the vice president casting the tie-breaking vote. 34 seats were at stake altogether. Here's how it's all worked out. Right now, 19 seats picked up by the Republicans, 13 tonight in tonight's balloting. Only two there, as you can see, remaining to be called. It's been a very good night for the Republicans. They now sit on 53, the Democrats 45. The, Democrat, the Republicans, rather, have picked up a couple of seats, as we said, two undecided. Back over here, we want to talk to Bruce Morton. Bruce and a closer look now at the governor. I think we do. Yeah, we want to look cl more closely, mm -hmm. even more closely at the governor's races. Uh, starting out with the night's two pickups. In New Hampshire, Democratic State Representative Gene Shaheen grabbing the governorship now held by Republican Steve Merrill, who's retiring, did not want to go for a third term. Uh, she defeated State Board of Education Chairman Ovid Lamontine and will become New Hampshire's first woman governor. West Virginia's former governor, Republican Cecil Underwood, is reclaiming his old job, now held by retiring Democrat Gaston Caperton. In a close race, Underwood beat former Democratic State Senator Charlotte Pritt. In Washington State, King County Executive Gary Locke has won the governor's seat now held by fellow Democrat Mike Lowry, who is retiring. Locke beat former GOP State Senator Alan Craswell. In Indiana, Lieutenant Governor Frank O'Bannon held on to the governor's office for the Democrats. He beat the Republican mayor of Indianapolis, Steve Goldsmith. Governor Evan Bayh was barred from a third term. As expected, Republican incumbents in Montana and Utah held on to their jobs. Governor Mark Roscoe easily defeated State Senator Judy Jacobson and Governor Mike Levitt trounced former Salt Lake County Commissioner.